If you've had a binocular microscope for a while, there's a good chance you've come across a few mods. Maybe you've played around with Darkfield or Reinberg filters, or even tried out making a simple polarization microscope. These inexpensive and powerful techniques allow you to probe the microcosmos in different ways and have become pillars of the amateur microscopist's toolkit. But there's another mod that you might not have encountered. Although it's similarly simple to implement and very well suited for amateur microscopes, it seems to have eluded the collective consciousness of hobbyist microscopists. It's a technique which will, quite literally, add a whole new dimension to the way you perceive the microcosmos. You'll feel your eyes follow the subtle twists of a Euglenid's body. The whirlpools of feeding rotifers will become swarming vector fields. The spirostoma will dip and dive and snake between sand grains, like eels navigating coral. This mod, first introduced over three quarters of a century ago by a man who would one day become one of the great microscopists and biologists of his time, is something that anyone with a binocular microscope can implement at home. And it deserves to be just as well known as the other essential techniques we learn as we continue to improve in this hobby. In honor of the man who first described it, I call it the Shinya Vision Mod. Let's learn how to do it. Now, as described in Shinya Inoue's patent, this would only work for those of you with heads where the interpupillary distance is changed by sliding the eyepieces closer and farther apart. If you were to attempt it on a head where the eyepieces fold and unfold, you'd likely find that it doesn't work well, or maybe not even at all. But don't worry, because I've come up with one extra step which will allow this to work for you. Just make sure to follow it if that's the kind of binocular head that you have. In addition to a binocular microscope, you'll need a 10x objective, a square of polarizing film, and some scissors and a permanent marker and ruler for cutting filters out of it. And then you'll also need some non-permanent double-sided adhesive. Poster tape or 3M468P will both work really well. And then, of course, you're definitely going to want a really nice sample to look at. Hopefully a jar of pond water with some sediment and debris inside. Now, before we start cutting filters, there's one thing I want to stress about this mod. It is very forgiving. As long as you generally follow the steps in this video, it's going to work great. So don't worry about making everything perfect. Once you do it the first time, it's only going to take you a few minutes to set up next time. Okay, so first we want to start with a square of polarizing film. This stuff has a certain orientation to it, and when you overlap two pieces with the orientation cross, they block the transmission of light. That's what makes this mod work. Now this stuff always comes with some protective film on each side, but leave it on until I tell you to remove it. Your polarizing film will come cut aligned to the polarization direction, and if you have a sliding type head, that's how you want it. But if you have a folding type head, you need to start with a square where the orientation is at a 45 degree slant. And that's easy enough to do. Just start from a square as cut by the manufacturer, and then draw a smaller square inside with the corners at the midpoints of each side. Then cut out the smaller square. At this point, no matter which head style you have, you can follow the same steps to implement Shinya Vision. I'll use the folding style square, since I think that's the one most of you will have. Now, we're going to cut four separate pieces out of this polarizing film. Two small semicircles to put on our objective, and two larger circles to go over our eyepieces. The semicircles need to be 18 millimeters in diameter or smaller, and if you have a cheap amateur grade objective, you can unscrew the little plastic aperture piece from the back as a guide. Now, just like I do here, draw two semicircles on adjacent edges of one corner of the square. Don't worry about making them perfect, it really doesn't matter. Next, use an eyepiece to trace out two larger circles also on adjacent edges. Leave a little flat spot on each so that it's easier to keep track of the orientation later. 
And as a final step before we cut, we're going to draw some capital Fs in each piece. These will help keep track of the filter orientation, which is especially important if you have a folding head. Write them exactly as I do here. Okay, now you just want to cut out all the shapes. When you cut out the little semicircles, cut inside the line by 1 to 2 millimeters. It's better to be undersized here than oversized. And you really don't need to be neat about this at all. Just cut them out roughly, and they'll work great. Okay, so let's build our Shinya Vision objective. You'll need your two semicircle pieces and the little plastic aperture from the back of the objective. First, cut two small pieces of double-sided adhesive and place them on opposite sides of the aperture. Now, remove the protective film from the back of one of your semicircle filters and place it with the F upright and the flat side covering about half of the aperture. Now do the same thing with the other filter. It's totally fine to eyeball this. If the dividing line is way off center, just peel them off and try again. One thing you do want to make sure of here is that the filters don't go past the edges of the aperture piece. Otherwise, you won't be able to screw the objective back into the scope. If you have some overhang, just peel the filter off and trim it down a little bit. You can check you've done this right by turning the piece on top of some spare polarizing film. For folding heads, you should see one half go dark when you twist 45 degrees one way, and the other half go dark when you twist 45 degrees in the other direction. For sliding heads, it'll be 0 degrees and 90 degrees instead. So, if you see this, go ahead and screw the aperture back onto the objective and remove the remaining film from the filter. Screw the objective back into your microscope turret, but don't tighten it down all the way. Leave it a little bit loose. Now pat yourself on the back. The hard part is over. We're almost ready to see in 3D. Since we're just a minute or two away from seeing in 3D, let's go ahead and prepare our slide. Since this is a 3D vision mod, we want to make a really thick sample so our microbes have room to swim up and down. Don't be afraid to get sand grains, debris, and plantlets in there. Seriously, it's hard to make this too thick. Now place the slide into your scope, move the 10x objective into place, and turn it on and bring the image into focus like you normally do. Before moving on, make sure the condenser is raised up as close as possible to the slide and open the iris all the way. Now we just need to align the objective and figure out which eyepiece filter goes with which eyepiece. While they're in front of us, let's go ahead and put a little double-sided adhesive on the rim of each eyepiece. Take them out and stare into the empty tube. You'll see your semicircle filters, and they'll probably be tilted a little bit. We want the dividing line to be straight up and down, so just unscrew the objective slightly until the filters are oriented like this. You'll keep the objective in this orientation while observing. Now get your eyepiece filters, and with the flat edge up and the F facing you, hold one up in front of the left eyepiece tube. What we want to see is the left semicircle turn dark. In this case, the right semicircle turn dark, which means this is the filter for the right eyepiece. If I grab the other filter, then I should see the correct pattern. When you find the correct filter, take the rear backing film off and stick it to the eyepiece with the flat edge up and remove the remaining protective film. Do the same thing with the right eyepiece verifying that the right semicircle goes dark. You might notice that one side doesn't get quite as dark as the other, or that it's a little uneven, but don't worry, it'll work. And that's technically all you need to do. But there's one last step I recommend, which is installing a dark field filter. You can use a prefabricated one, or follow my super quick guide on how to make one from scrap cardstock. Dark field really does enhance the sense of depth, and that's how I think you should first experience Shinya Vision. Also, if you're sharing the scope with a friend, make sure to keep the head pointed in the same direction. 
And if they need to change the IPD, adjust the eyepieces to always keep the flat edges of the filters upright. Now, at first, the effect might not seem so dramatic. If you're just looking at sand grains and whatnot, it might be hard to tell what's so special. But once you see critters swimming around the slide and crawling up and down the debris, you'll feel the difference. You'll perceive them, not as if you were watching them on a screen, but as if they were right there in front of you in a tiny little aquarium. I'm going to release some more videos about the theory behind this mod, some ways to make it a little bit better, and about Dr. Noe himself and what he did for microscopy and biology. He really was a pretty incredible guy, and I bet today is the first time many of you have ever heard of him. I hope you'll consider subscribing so that you can come along for the ride. But more than anything, I just really hope you try this out. It's such a terrific mod, and a really cool way to see the microcosmos in the same way that a great master did. From Diet Tom's Diet Tom's, I've been Jason. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.